Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Now today I'm going to do the full moon reading, well, message and then reading. So as always, it'll be time stamped in the comments or in the description, probably both in the description box, um, how that's going to be uh, stamped, separated. So first will be the full moon message and then the full moon reading. <clears throat> so govern yourselves accordingly, okay? So just jumping straight into it. This is the full moon and Capricorn message. <laughs> All right, so um, today is Friday, June 21st, 2024. Today is the actual day of the full moon in Capricorn. And that's happening about nine something. I forgot to jot down the time. I want to say like sometime after 930 Eastern time tonight is the official time. And um, this is the strawberry moon and also the first full moon of the summer. So again, happy summer solstice, happy summer season. Thankfully, it's just the day after that solstice where we had a great deal of a surge of energy. So try to hold on to that pocket full of sunshine as it may be optimism and enthusiasm as you can, because it may actually be useful <clears throat> to, re to, to source to undergird the intensity of this lunation. So relationships yet again are in focus with Venus opposing the moon in Cancer. Understanding is the operative word. Heart chakras will be more open than usual, which means that collectively, we could all be a bit more in our feels than usual. Mercury in Cancer may support more assertive expression, although carefully chosen words, actions, and reactions could help curb conflicts and surge solutions for optimum connections. Beware of moon illusion, where an optical illusion will, will make the moon appear larger on the horizon. Spiritual translation, beware of projections, both internally and externally, that may exasperate perspectives and provoke irrational responses. Passions will be running high universally, which can sometimes incite a heightened obsession for control. That energy is best transmuted into consideration, personally, of the um, transmuted in, into consideration. Oh, there it is. Personally, of the root of of such thoughts and feelings, and in true full moon full, full moon form, <laughs> what of it may get to be released perhaps for good. So considering what you actually have control over versus what or even who, how, where, and when you don't is all just as curious as why you, des you desire to at all. Take an inventory of the personal stock you have in controlling anyone or anything outside of yourself can be a sensible first step of seasonal or spiritual cleansing. That process may lead to the realization of ways in which you may even want to loosen the leash on yourself. Allow yourself to be as cancer season supports. However, contrary to Capricorn, allow others that liberty as well without intrusion. There is a world where we can all amicably exist, coexist with and without conflicts of interest. A reasonable commitment to cater to self should be at the most minimal expense, if any at all, of others. Whatever satisfaction is expected, even demanded from external sources, can almost always be better harvested from within, first and foremost. 
That ideal alone can help alleviate excessive pressures from the outside in and the inside out to be, do, or have any more than the present moment necessitates. A pronunciation of true power is managing a posture of peace and temperance no matter what. You're the boss. Your emotions work for you. Anyone that doesn't may need to be fired. So let this full moon be a performance review. All right, so that's the end of the full moon and Capricorn message again today, June 21st, 2024. Again, govern yourselves accordingly. And jumping right straight into the next, this is the full moon and Capricorn reading. All right. So I pretty I'm pretty sure I didn't say I hope you're doing well cuz I just kind of jumped right into the message and that's cool. I know you know by now, especially if you've been here before, that that's always the forefront of my thoughts is your wellness. <laughs> it's the reason I'm even here, as a matter of fact. So I hope that you are doing exceptionally well. Even in this heat, if you're caught up in the wave like I am, I'm definitely going to try to keep it cute and sweet because I don't have air or a fan on right now to, to keep noise at bay. <clears throat> or noise interference, I should say. But, um, yeah, we're going to... I'm I'm actually kind of intrigued to see what the message is today in light of this new moon, given we're pretty much already in the energy of it. I feel like many of the messages I've kind of been tapping in, into over this past week have been engaged in this energy to some extent and what I didn't mention is the fact well I have mentioned this in other other videos but I didn't mention in the message I don't know why but I wasn't guided to really tap into that the way that I thought I was going to so maybe a reservation for another time or maybe it comes up in the reading I don't know but um the this full moon in Capricorn on this June 21st is going to spin the block. Well, not entirely because there'll be different transits in play at that time, but we're going to have a, a full moon in Capricorn next month, July 21st as well. So this gateway is very significant in regards to what you're manifesting, what you're cultivating, what you're investing in, what you're working on, how you're building not just for the next month, the next season, but in some cases, as far of a stretch out as the next year. Maybe even more for some. It just depends on what you're working on. So it really is imperative that whatever you do is done in the highest integrity because Capricorn Moon, as we know, is connected to that devil energy, that devil card, which is not necessarily Satan itself, <laughs> but it's the lower tendencies in us all to um, limit ourselves, to answer to oppressive behaviors or activities, um, addictions even, and even to have uh, an old, a, hyper, uh, ex a hyper active urge to want to control not just ourselves and our surroundings, but also others, even more so as Capricorn is about other people's power. So just be mindful how you um, use your power of manifestation, not towing too closely to that line of manipulation in any regard, because how you're setting yourself up is ultimately what you're going to harvest probably even more immediately than the next eight months to a year, but certainly so within that time frame. You know, to veer away from manipulation at all costs, and whether you are 
you know, the aggressor or the one that is be is experiencing it and, and you sense that you are. Find a way to, if, if there can be an understanding clearly in communication about what you're experiencing and what you expect to shift, that's where that piece about what you're requesting or demanding outside of you can always be harvested internally. You can't control what other people do, how they live their lives, how they advance towards you, how they even intend to maybe affect your uh, life experience intentionally or, or unintentionally. But you can al always make adjustments that maintain your alliance with your own personal integrity. And that's probably the key within this gateway um, because there probably may be temptations or even provocations to do otherwise. And the last thing you want to do at this great threshold is to, is to sabotage yourself from ultimate satisfaction, you know, and the way that you holistically desire it, not just in the bits and pieces or settlements or immediate gratifications of it, the fabrications of it, like the, the total package, you know, so there's that. But anyway, let's see. Oh, look at that. Four of Wands. Yeah, that's definitely stability, harmony, balance. Um, and your home life, certainly think considering cancer is definitely a, uh, a focus on home, whether it be your physical home or your care even for yourself, your physical being, and how you make yourself at home in the spaces that you are um, exposed to, or and also what you allow to be exposed to the to the intimate spaces that you call home, i.e., sanctuary. So the Four of Wands is a is an interesting start here. You could even now you actually may even be more inclined throughout this cancer season to be more of a homebody or begin to nest, especially through these two um, pillars of the full moons, that these Capricorn full moons, you may actually feel more inclined to, to um, what's the right word, to kind of contract your circle, your social circle, if nothing else. Um, but that could look like different things for different people, you know, but certainly you may feel more of a connection or at least more of a comfort at home than you necessarily do out and about engaging um, socially. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you are more social, if you, you still are feeling the urge to be social, it may just be in smaller, uh, in smaller experiences or maybe more selectively, perhaps. And another thing that came up when I was kind of doing my research on this moon and the full moon of next month is this awakening and revelation of your intimate relationships you know that something's there's something coming out of this um what's the right way to say it like this um review of sorts where you're getting to kind of observe yourself and your operation and function and relationships but also of course what that external um what it, what external influences may be up for change or um or release altogether but certainly reform you know something for something different to to shift within the dynamic um but there's something to be said particularly through this month about having full clarity of what that is especially given we're in we're going to be in the thick of cancer season throughout this whole time and emotions are are much more flush than they typically are um there's something about being able to see more objectively uh by next full moon, maybe even 
um, observing or receiving revelations that are daunting in some way, shape, or form about your associations, affiliations, surroundings, connections, relationships, things of that nature that may more or less um, forge the change that you're, you may sense is necessary in your auric field now, if that makes sense. So what I'm saying is, is that you may have the emotional uh, nudge or um, let's say intel of what changes are what changes are necessary or warranted, meaning like you may feel that, okay, something has to give or someone has to give, or even before you actually know why throughout this time. And sometimes that's a bit hard of an energy to um, contend with because most of us as human beings like to have some affirmative um, uh affirmative confirmation of what we're feeling, like some receipts to match our emotions. And, so, and that's the reason why sometimes we can act irrationally out of that discomfort because sometimes we can feel more than we can actually um, intellectualize, if that makes sense. But there's something about allowing that allowance of yourself to be, to feel, to observe, to reflect, review, to um, take note of yourself, how you're being, what you're feeling, how you're feeling it, with whom you're feeling it, um, as a result of what, you know, like really just observe yourself as from the inside out and the outside in and have compassion and consideration for everyone else that's kind of going through that process whether they realize it or not. So something, an exchange that could be triggering in one effect given the heightened intensity of this transit and this lunation may not really warrant as much of um, an ag aggressive or even defensive response as it just yields consideration and grace in this moment. Because what may be um, re revealing itself emotionally, energetically now, it's ultimately building a case for you to intellectualize a, a final result or, or affirmation or even action orientation by that next new moon in July. By then, you'll know exactly what to do, exactly who you're working with, what you're working with, what you're not, and how to react, respond, or initiate, you know, some in, some interaction or another accordingly. I hope that makes sense. Didn't really mean to do all that, but somehow I didn't feel guided to say it in the message, but. I hope I made it make sense now. Probably very little, which is to the point of what I'm saying, to intellectualize, communicate, um, you know, what's the right word? Um, to even articulate may be a bit of a challenge regarding what you're feeling, what your, what your energy knows versus what your your reality has receipts for you know you know cancer season is very intuitive even psychic so you definitely should allow yourself to trust yourself like i said in the very end of the message your emotions work for you they're signs they're signals they're signatures of what you may need to pay attention to but sometimes it's a matter of paying attention to what's triggering you unnecessarily that you need to release. And sometimes it is a matter of what is triggering that needs to be released or reformed so that you can, um, you can uh, neutralize that unfavorable experience one way or another. 
but you gotta feel it first. You have to feel it and then discern and dictate. So, and that might seem easy for some, but for many, it's not. It's not that easy. So now that I'm saying this and you know, like if you're having any particular incessant emotions or heightened emotions or even obsessive thoughts, don't beat yourself up about that. Just allow yourself to ground to um, a process of review, considering why and the root and where is this coming from? What's it triggered by? And what can I do about it in this moment? You know, how can I nurture myself? Cancer season for sure. How can I nurture myself emotionally in this moment? And, and all of that process of nurturing is taken into account in all the, the aspects that I said, even in a, first and foremost in allowing yourself to feel your feelings, but certainly then allowing yourself to discern what of it is valid or um, objective or even productive and what is not, you know? So anyway, so four of pentacles is somebody holding on to something, holding back something, wanting to control some resources or energy here. Ah, here's the manipulation. Trying to, this is like, yeah, this is definitely manipulation because we got four pentacles which is definitely about conserving, but in, I'm reading it as controlling. And the magician, that is that, that line, poorly told, where someone is manhandling an outcome, you know, trying to dictate the timing, the, um, the material, the outcome, the influence, their own influence, whatever it is, if they they got the, both of their hands on the wheel tight, as you can see here, like holding on tight, sitting up, wheel almost on their chest, trying to drive this car to some uh, some specific destination. And by car, I mean their vehicle, their their physical vessel. shoot maybe things but more but even it, it's for what it's it's what it's i it's think no it's they're trying to control elements outside of their physical vessel actually but for the benefit of their physical being that's what it is because all these coins are on the outside but they're all attached to him so there's some benefit or opportunity or objective that someone has to be positively affected by, but the way that they are obsessively controlling the elements with every fiber in their being, so it seems, is exactly the pitfall that I'm warning of in this moment that could ultimately lead to a backfire or to the opposite of the desired outcome, certainly an unfavorable outcome. Yeah, here we go here with the Nine of Swords where somebody is, is paranoid. They're paranoid about the future or, or the impending result of their manipulation. Or it could be of somebody paranoid about what their controlling tendencies has manifested, of which now they can't control. And here it is. Wow, we've got the high priestess. Then we got the five of wands here, which is chaos and confusion. So maybe someone trying to control too much, do too much, actually created more burden to bear than was desirable, or certainly than is productive. That's usually what happens though, which is why I know it came up in the message, particularly with this contrast between cancer season and a Capricorn full moon. 
because you can't control anything really outside of yourself. And really that's about as limited to your um, actions and reactions, which is not limited at all. It's a great power as a matter of fact. But when you consider the vast world of possibilities and potential um, opportunities to control and dictate, it feels limited and it feels menial. And that's where, you know, the conflict arises when you feel provoked to try to then impose your um, your power in spaces where you don't have, you know, justified jurisdiction. Some people can take liberty and sometimes we all do in some ways to try to, you know, steer the wheel aggressively. But a lot of times we find out that it always comes back to one. You know, you now here's this big mess and somebody is at this point of the nine of swords, like, anxious about what is and paranoid about what's to come which this is the look lo the what is it the lotus point of control the locust point i always mess that up <laughs> point of control surely in your um in your your emotional responses your mental uh, perspective of your circumstances. You may not be able to fully dictate the outcome, but you can certainly decide how you're going to perceive it and then respond. And so somebody is relinquishing their power in all the ways that are actually um, ordained to them but has persisted in the ways that they were most um, restricted, let's say, or where, where they were limited. They took liberty anyway. So there's that. What's the high priestess? Oh, yeah, here's the, oh, okay, well. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, look at this. We got the high priestess here. And this feels like... Hold on. Because let's not forget where we started here with the Four of Wands. That's a balanced, harmonious union there of some sort. It doesn't have to be intimate, but it certainly does imply that it, that it may be. We're just in partnership overall. Well-supported on both sides, there's understanding, there's balance, there's commitment here. But then we have the high priestess and I was going to say the king of pentacles i was going to project the king of pentacles and what feels like what more or less would be an unfavorable light but i think the king of pentacles is a different energy from this seven of swords walking into this ending this death card, oh, somebody, okay. So somebody is afraid of their ultimate demise. And I would say, I would almost said untimely demise. That's what, oh, wow. That's why there's this control of time here with the four of pentacles. 
somebody's trying to roll back time or maybe even praying for absolution from their actions, praying for forgiveness, praying for another chance, praying for Yeah, a rebirth or a do-over. Because whatever it is that they have gotten themselves into, which is here evident in the Eight of Pentacles, is out of control. It's no longer within their control. It's like somebody has worked themselves into danger. Literally on a, a crash course, a crash a, a crash collision course with death. And maybe this, okay, so maybe this this um, King of Pentacles is them wanting to almost like buy their way out of the bind. But we all know that your money is no good with the divine. And I was going to say like the high priestess feels like an energy. It doesn't necessarily feel like a person if it's an embodiment of hmm. Hmm. oh it's, it's against divine feminine divine femininity that's what it is that's what it is It's divine femininity that someone has perhaps by way of their relationships particularly, but I think we're speaking to a whole list a holistic um, mindset and behavior against the sacred nature of woman. Meaning no matter what the caliber, whether she's divine or knows she's divine or doesn't or claims to be or not, that someone in their experiences has taken great liberty to be manipulative and deceptive and dishonest against that energy, again, unjustifiably, outside of jurisdiction, perhaps spiritually unlawfully with the depiction of the high priestess here. And they may have chalked it up to materialism or even objectifying women, which it feels like someone in this case would feel you know, is just kind of like par for the course of being a man. That's what I'm sensing with this emperor over here. That machismo, misogynistic, maybe even toxic masculinity that is like, well, you know, I'm the man. If I have this liberty, then, and it's allowed, there's an allowance for it, then how can I be wrong? But they're getting a rude awakening that just because you can do a thing, back to what I was saying, just because you have the power to do something doesn't mean that you should. And if you do, you must also be prepared for the consequences of your choices. So, yeah, it's like somebody's trying to work off a debt here or work off, like they're trying to find a way to work this deficiency or something off of them. Then we got the four. What is the four of, of wands, though? It seems so random up here. It's not. I know it's not. But how is that intertwined? 
maybe the actions that someone took caused disruption to what would otherwise be balanced and harmonious partnerships or call, or you know inserted themselves into partnerships that would have been better off without them and then they didn't really do you know it's like those types of energies where it's like you should have just left left so and so alone or left them alone or let them be it's like they would have been far better off but left to their own devices without you having to come and intentionally look to create chaos and discord and, you know, like something that would have been well left alone had it been left alone, but someone, it's almost like someone was attracted to the the idea of it being something that is well and balanced and established and that was the temptation itself like how can i get in there and cause chaos how can i how can i impose my obsession for control over a space that doesn't even operate like that. It's like coming into a home space mm, I just got a thought too. It's, this is like two people that have a really decent partnership, pretty damn good, right? and then enters in homeboy or homegirl, whether it's somebody you just met, like met them on the job, or you become acquainted with somehow, and they start to observe the fluidity of your partnership, your union, and however incited, whether it be by jealousy, envy, or just, just one of those people that just don't like to see others happy, they devise a plan to disrupt that order, to bring imbalance to that relationship, whether it be on the side to the homie, to the side on to the man, you know, talking in his ear, influencing him on why things should be different, like manipulating an outcome that would have never been otherwise. Or a homegirl, jealous homegirl that's telling you, girl, you take that, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Like, I, I mean, you know, just subtly planting seeds in your psyche about what ultimately is working for you. But now you're second guessing it because somebody is challenging it you know but 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 the the magician card is like cunning manipulation in this regard so it's not somebody that's just just playing around just throwing stuff out there it's somebody that definitely has an agenda a malicious agenda here i don't know why i just picked all that up but there's that. And it could even be like widespread, you know, the energies of um, a resistance against divine partnerships that are coming into order and causing disruptions one to another. You know, somebody over here being a distraction and a disturbance for the masculine, somebody over here in the feminine's life creating their own levels of distraction which keeps them both at bay from aligning on one accord, you know, whether it is to, to meet and come together and establish a, a union or to cultivate a, a positive and productive one, a healthy one. Yeah, something about that here. But it seems like a great deal of well, I can't say that because like, you know what? I think I'm, mis I'm mixing this up. I think this was last. Because 
what I was going to say is I feel like this um, King of Pentacles is like a different type of energy. So it's exactly what I'm saying where there was um, a plan of attack or an effort of aggression toward the masculine and feminine energy to somehow get away with get over or 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 get o you know get away with causing some type of uh infraction to what would otherwise be a high valued man you know considerably and then i've already said that this is like the divine femininity so we already know that that's been on high attack for sure but what we don't always talk about is the way in which the masculine energy has been violated as well. It doesn't always come out so pronounced. Yeah. And this could even be... Yeah, this is this this could be still in the yeah, yes yeah, for for energy harvesting purposes. There we go, manipulating an outcome because those that didn't have the privilege of this title, masculine or feminine, schemed ways to acquire it by their own might, not with fair ordinance or a um uh anointing you know appointment even if we don't like anointing but it's clear that it's both of those here right they found a way to to control the, or at least seemingly to control the variables of that equation to work out in their favor so people have stolen, you know, divine masculine energies by, you know, suppressed suppression. Um, like I just said, it could even be as simple as, you know, people that you, homeboy that's close to you that you think is, is your man's, is actually a snake. And they would rather have the fortune that you have materially so or even spiritually so to be um, exalted on a certain level of energy to be a magnetic force for a caliber of co-creativity such as this like practically primitively speaking it, you know a homie that's jealous because you get all the best girls or at least you have access to like high quality women that they would want to have access to, but they ain't shit. <laughs> like ultimately they ain't shit. So instead of becoming more than ain't shit, they figure out a way to either deplete other people's energy to reflect themselves in a higher light, which is a false light, or they actually extract energies that they um that they idealize would allow them again to still create themselves in that false persona but the gotcha gotcha is that are ladies that are truly in you know feminine energy i'll say that's truly in a div of a of a divine nature is far more are far more intuitive and perceptive at least now more than ever before not to see the real thing when it's in front of them it's like somebody did a whole hell of a lot to exalt themselves to appear to be even higher than the so-called king of pentacles Maybe by, you know, boosting their aesthetic appeal, 
um, acquiring wealth, accomplishments, accolades, promotions, prestige, um, positions of power, so on and so forth. Like they were, they were able to manipulate it only in the limitation of the things that are, um, that are more or less illusionary, but the stuff that is of the core is what can't be controlled, as in here with the Four of Pentacles. You can't control your inter internal nature to reflect the persona that you created on the outside. Like you will always be revealed for exactly who you are at some point, no matter how, how diligent you are to conceal it with adornments. And this is, this is giving someone that is finally failing at that facade. And not only are they failing at that facade, but now they're having to answer for their methods and means of establishing it and maintaining it because it wasn't even just about the establishment there was a lot of work that had to be done as i said like to really maintain this persona maintain these appearances that people created for themselves they're they're fading away and as they were fading and that was the warning shot you know to now figure out how to do something real people uh, doubled down a lot of times and, you know, advanced their corruptions in order to maintain their positions, maintain their influence, maintain their, their power, their access, their um, reputation, their appearance. But the divine feminine all the while is still the divine feminine, even when she may not have appeared to be, even more so now. Anyone that's been committed to div divine feminine, um, that's been devoted to divine energy, not even just femininity, but when I'm saying femininity, it's not even exclusive to a woman. We're talking about that, that feminine um, polarity, sacred, uh, sacred um, fertility within us all, man and woman, where we where we value ourselves highly as as a sanctified. Um, how can I, it sounds real religious how I'm saying it, and I don't mean for it to, but these are just the words, like as a sanctified expression of humanity. Supreme, my favorite word, a supreme expression of humanity. That's what it is. The nurturer in you, the, the, the compassion in you, the lover in you, the understanding, the grace, the gratitude, all of that stuff, and, and, and that being more or less the stuff that material manifestations are actually made of before anything. That's the spiritual essence of it all. That's, the, that's, that's why it's so precious to fabricate or make a synthetic copy in the first place because or to um, extort or hijack, you know, well, once upon a time, energy such as this weren't aware of their value. So they were easily more um, inhabitable, you know, to say, to say it strangely. <laughs> I don't know why I said inhabitable, but there you go. Um, yeah, it used to be easier to to engage and ease and and infiltrate and incubate even. But 
as the awareness of these ener energetic forces begins to or began to rise, the influence of malevolent forces began to decline. So now they see each other for exactly who they are. And it what it compels is a bit of a regret and a sorrowfulness, um, not necessarily on account for the for this malevolent energy as I'm speaking of, not necessarily on account of really feeling bad for what was done, but more so feeling bad for what now is is truly lost, because it, once upon a time liberties could be taken without objection over such energies, whether it be to influence the masculine energy or to um, to what's the right word for the feminine energy to um, I don't know, but you know, like to take advantage of the feminine energy one way or another and It went unchecked, of course, because of, like I said, the disparity in awareness. But now that that is not so much the case anymore, it's not so easy to get away with being your snaky self. And here it goes back to what I was saying in the uh, message is that you, well, after the message, before this reading, you may have the sensation of knowing who to keep your guard up against or or to just keep a guard up period even before you have the evidence and that's more or less what folks are trying to get out of the way of that total exposure mass completely melted off is look how he's holding his his face in his hands afraid that the true identity of the inside out of certain energies will be exposed to a point of no return where you won't even be able to manipulate anyone anymore because who you are will just be literally written all over your face to some degree. It'll put an end to this ability to dictate and control and manipulate situations in your favor because here it is, there won't be access to the high level commodities anymore. It'll be diminished to, you know, the scraps literally over here, the five of wands of what's not really even so much desirable because it's not really as productive energy as it did. Look at this and look at this, you know, ain't nothing getting done over here but energies that are well established, secure, um, stable, dependable, in integral, honorable, those are the, the hot commodities now. And they're no longer just open to the market anymore. So this is more, it's definitely, I mean, this is, it's a greater spotlight on the energies that have a lot to lose but of course to me it always is more is more interesting to consider what that says about the other side of the spectrum i.e. you if you can relate to this more benevolent energy here balanced frequency that those that have been able to get over to monopolize on your power, um, your talents, your abilities, hell, even on your name, you know, by way of lies and, and, and deception and um, defamation and you know spinning stories about who you actually are and what you do and you know all types of stuff that people have been getting away with for a long time and secretly you know being quite um mysterious in their mayhem 
is not happening anymore. And the only thing that it's like you have minimal participation here in what's happening because the only thing that you have to worry about is just to keep on being you and focusing on what truly matters as the King of Cups, the King of Pentacles, I'm sorry, to you as your Supreme Self. So in tying it into the new moon, as I said, that feeling of like something's off, like something needs to change or someone needs to, you know, it's like, don't even worry about it. The trash will take itself out as long as you are in alignment with your integrity. What gets to be revealed may be shocking, you know, it may, it may be alarming, but it won't to, 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 um, confront in a materialized, actualized form, you know, like with receipts, with confirmation, like, oh, it's been you all the time, or, oh, that's, that's what you've been up to, or, oh, this is why I haven't felt comfortable with you, or, oh, this is why I didn't fully trust myself with you, like, it'll, all of that will, will, will reveal itself, certainly, even as you allow yourself to be one with more or less almost like the the materialization of your intuition as it's crystallizing not in fear not in anxiety because that actually feeds the opposition way too much of your power and energy that's where that's how they source it you know from you being paranoid and worried about what you're missing or what what um, has been withheld from you or who's talking about you or, you know, if someone's being faithful or someone's being honest or what of the past you should know but you don't know or, you know, like who's really a, your friend and who's really in competition or jealous of you. It'll all come out in the wash. It always does. And I'm saying this because with this lunation and this transit and the, you know, the gateway ahead, there may be some, um, there may be a provoking energy to want to get to the bottom of things that really are not quite meant to be gotten to the bottom of yet because they're, the bottom's going to fall out so that you don't even have to deal with it, really. All you have to do is just maintain your own personal security and, and stability, maintain power, authority over what you can control, and that's you. the lovers yeah there's been great liberty taken to try to control the the um coming together of these divine partnerships but yep with the moon card and there still may be even under this full moon because it's the temptation is there even for those of us that have no interest and controlling anything outside of ourselves, really, you know, like literally being intentional about taking someone else's energy and repurposing it for ourselves or, sh or changing the frequency of someone else's um, vitality to, to suit our own, um, our, our own needs. The temptation is still there even for us that mean the best for ourselves and for others. So imagine what it's like for those that are on the opposite frequency. It's not even a temptation. It's just an outright calling. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's an, it's, all, it's, it's an obsession. That's what it is. It's an obsession. 
that will be managed by the most high source of all, which is why you don't have to worry about micromanaging it yourself. It's already, it's already being worked out. People are getting fired. Yep, and exposed. And it's like the way that it's happening is it's, it's undeniable. It's like if you try to say, take matters into your own hands and expose people for what they are and what they've been and what they do, it won't even have the same outcome as when it, ha when it comes from a divine ordinance. It, it happens in a way like the sun. It's like, if you don't see it because the clouds are covering, you damn sure going to feel it. You know, like, you know when it's daylight and you know when it's not, even if it's hella cloudy. And that's, that's the finality and closure that you would want to bring to situations such as this, where you may have been um, disenfranchised and outright victimized. Let's just call it what it is. But allow allow the universe to bring closure into order for you because it's no more final than that. Like I said, some people are being fired. Some people are being demoted. Some people are being exposed to the point of shame and embarrassment. Some people are being exposed for their um, incompetence, their lack of um credentials or skill sets to be in the positions that they have occupied um some people are are being exposed for how they gained access and occupancy in certain positions and 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 in cer at certain powers how they've earned their money how they built their empires or their estates or what actually is funding the establishment. Maybe that's why this sent this house energy is what it is. So, Cause sometimes I do see that as like a facade of an establishment where up from, from afar it looks like everything is wonderful. But when you get up close, you start to see the, the inner workings, the is it literally could be an exposure of business facades or corporations and establishments that are operating in one function or presuming to, but are actually doing something quite different. And it's definitely going to, you know, mystically speaking, because we can't, I feel like that's the biggest, um, like drum roll that is building up is that a lot of these things we kind of just consider to simply be practical or material like oh, okay just somebody else being greedy wanting more money or doing you know but it's really is deeper and darker than that and a lot of a lot of times more sinister than the naked eye would ever see on its own, which is why I'm saying like it takes a different level of exposure to bring total finality to corruption in a way that is designed to be so now so that people can't just close down and then and then pop up shop in another name or as another facade or behind another CEO or, you know, but it's the same organization, it's the same function, just changing faces and, and figureheads. No, all of that is about to be shut down. That if it's not something operating in integrity and in truth, productively, for prosperity's sake, again, with, as I said in my message, with little, um, to, to little of little to no at little or no expense to others, you know, no detriment to others, then it's going to be eliminated, bankrupt, shut down. 
justice. Wow. Exactly. Ultimate justice, not just like short term, you know, got my lick back. Justice for creation. So that that's one less energy we <clears throat> and, and justice by way of even transformation of those energies um, so that that's one less less frequency we have to worry about um, shape-shifting or resurrecting into something else to be some other problem down the line. So that it could look like that for offenders of, you know, in their physical right, you know, predators, offenders, whatever you want to call them. And it could look like that on a greater scale and as in corporations or even nations with the emperor card here. Wherever there has been unfairness, there will be judgment to, to answer for. No one is exempt at the highest height of the pyramid to the lowest low and whatever that means. But, you know, ideally speaking, no one's invincible. So you, there may be a great deal of, of revelations that are um, preview throughout this next month or so where you see things that really make you scratch your head like, what? It makes you feel a certain type of way, but you can't really put your finger on the why. And that could be on a media scale, on a social scale, you know, a public perspective and a personal one. But you know that something just ain't right about that or there's something behind it or, you know, that's that's more than likely a nudge to know that the, re the revelation will come in the time that is necessary. And if you feel a certain type of way after doing your check-ins and your personal review, just be feel um, authorized to protect yourself accordingly, to take the proper security measures. That doesn't mean aggressive or be an aggressor. That's defensive. Because you don't want to sully your hands trying to prove nothing to nobody or, you know, acting irrationally or impulsively out of fear or anxiety yourself. You're just, when you know, when you feel, you, you know you take steps to affirm the security that is a proper response to that feeling. Nothing more, nothing less. And that you don't have to hurt anybody to do that. It may be offensive to people that would want you to stay open and vulnerable and, you know, because they're used to being, having access to you a certain type of way, but that's not the offense here. The offense is the deception itself. And when you're in the high priestess energy where you you your senses tell like almost have a built-in alarm to a, a um deception, you have a, a divine duty to respond on account of your own defense. You can't leave that up to chance. You can't leave that up to, to any external force because you've literally been equipped to create your own security system just by responding to how you feel and, and honoring how you feel more so than the response, but literally honoring your emotional intelligence. 
that is the security alarm that then alerts the secret service to swoop in and do what needs to be done from a from a from a perspective that is often unseen <laughs> and intangible inexplicable at times yeah like exactly for you know it your adversary your 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 so-called enemies are completely disabled and you didn't have to lift a finger all because you honored the value of your integrity above all with this ace of pentacles that's knowing your supreme worth knowing how important you are to the divine like you knowing that and you expressing that in your um actions and reactions that you won't even allow yourself to stoop to certain levels to certain um responses to be engaged in certain levels of conversation or arguments or dispute or in the way that disagreement persists you know or evolves i should say like certain things are just quite honestly beneath you beneath you and it's knowing that unapologetically that makes all the difference because some the projection is that illusionary projection is to make you feel like you know like you should be condemned for feeling that anything is beneath you when the truth is is that many things are when you're operating on a frequency like that not because you condemn others for their choices but because you have a, a very a, um a very de definitive standard for your own And a lot of the projections that would play on the emotion of you feeling better than, or I'm not going to take all these, but, but look, justice again, 10 of cups, yeah, and the two of wands is really just to be, um, to make and to interfere in your ultimate, in your happiness and your satisfaction with yourself simply because they want to be able to access you at a lower frequency to have that very same thing but in a fabricated form for themselves that's it and you and real gotta recognize real when you're dealing with moon illusions especially this one in this case where it's already been said that it may appear to be bigger on the horizon than it actually is, meaning that there could be projections hurled your way of conflict, concerns, issues that take on one form, but really are nowhere near that size or that level of, of importance. And that could happen on a national scale too, I feel. Like some big conflict that is projected to us all, uh, you know, some world conflict to make us all feel afraid or feel like we're in danger or something big is about to happen. And then we start working our energies up to, you know, brace ourselves for that impact. And it really wasn't even all that. It was nothing of that, actually. Nowhere close to that. But because now we've worked ourselves up into a tizzy about what it appeared to be, now, because we're all so powerful energetically, it actually is. 
that's how our energies get harvested and harnessed to do lower vibrational dirty work in a way that ultimately gets used against us not for us and works to solidify the disparity and the power dynamic that already you know that's already deteriorating and now it's like an overtime um effort to do so with the eight of pentacles that showed up because it's deteriorating so people are impulsively trying whatever they think can stick to reestablish the structure that they are most comfortable with because they are most dominant within it and have the most to benefit and gain from it. Not the ideal that we all can share. No, no, that's, that's way too progressive. What's in it for me? Is the frequency <laughs> wow look at that well that solidifies that when I was talking about the masculine and feminine energy thank you spirit that affirms that the highest value of man and woman is what is most coveted here and mainly it always has been but mainly because there's a, a new establishment of independence and security in that identity that has is unprecedented is never at least not in our lifetime not in this dimension not in this realm <laughs> that we know of has it ever been so evident and apparent the um, value, precious value of human beings. We just, oh wow, 10 of cups, lovely. Yeah, and this is the gateway of that realization. This is that threshold that I'm talking about. Why it's important not to forfeit that that um, frequency for anyone or anything. Yes, you. It is beneath you. Whatever it is, if it ain't on this, if it ain't on the Ace of Pentacles level, Ace of Anything's level. When we got the Sun involved here and the Ten of Cups, it's the lovers. It's like no. I'm not interested. I'm not engaged. I'm not getting up off my throne. I'm not coming out of my character. I'm not sacrificing my integrity. I'm not surrendering my peace. None of it for nothing and no one. Mm -mm no matter what the so-called threat may appear to be. It can't be worth it. It's, it, it can't be. But it's up to you to know that. And you, you know that, you know that, but certainly to maintain that in the frequency of your responses and reactions. Because I feel like I keep harping on that because Energies may try it on the macro scale or on the micro scale. Universally, globally, nationally, statewide, citywide, <laughs> you know, in your home, at your job, in your neighborhood, you know, in your relationship. Hell, internally, you might try yourself just being influenced by the surrounding forces it may cause you to question yourself like am i enough am i worth it am i doing the right thing am i making the right decision am i seeing this the right way am i fit 
thinking too hard or thinking too much? Am I reading too deep? Am I being too paranoid, being too emotional? Like you literally may question yourself and I'm going to go ahead and say that nine times out of 10, you're not thinking to any, you're not to anything. Nine times out of 10. If you're listening to this message and you resonate with this corridor of, <laughs> you know, this very small corridor of energy over here, nine times out of 10, you're right on the money. This whole line of it. Let's see what we got for the last card. Then I'm going to close it out. I said I was going to keep it cute. My incense has been going, but it's time stamped and I do have the message before this. So it may be a bit long, but the reading may not be that long. What was that? Wow. Wow. No, you're not to anything. <laughs> You are right on the bullseye. For many, it's just a matter. I mean, hell, some may never get the confirmation or the, you know, the the physical closure that you would be expecting in the way that you you would want to see it, you know. I feel like many will, because I, I just feel like that's also a part of justice for those that have been mishandled a certain way, that you will absolutely see everything for what it is, because you can be trusted by the divine with that level of power without then turning around again and being vengeful or... Um, rage for or unforgiving or you know you're already at the high priestess energy the queen of pentacles and the king of pentacles there's a certain um spiritual affluence here you know a high value of a spiritual being that knows it that has you know, evidence for it for themselves, even if nobody else can see it, they know for themselves exactly how precious they are, one and two, the divine, like that is confirmed and affirmed. And I feel like this, there's even more of a double down here on that with the Ace of Wands saying that you are trustworthy with that level of high power, as I said, to know, to be able to, con you're conducive to it because of the frequency of light that you've already cultivated for yourself and you can be responsible conducting in it all the same, conducting it, I should say, all the same. It's the transfer of wealth and power right here. That's, that's what it is. That's been coming up a lot. It's happening. And the, the funny thing is, I think the ambiguous part is the, the confirmation to those of which are privy to it. Because you feel it, you know but you don't, you may not yet see, you may not have evidence, it may not have materialized for you just yet, but those of, of whom are losing it, oh, they know. They know it very well. Their lives, it's written all over their lives. They're just not showing it. They're trying to keep up the face that everything is still fine, everything's all good, because they don't want to tip anybody on the outside off to the fact that they're not still who they have projected themselves to be. That including those that may be in alignment to stand to now benefit from all of that redispersed energy that was ultimately stolen. But they know, and they know exactly where it's going to, back to where it belongs. In every way, shape, and form, from the highest to the lowest and everything in between, it's known that if it's leaving you, it's going back to where it belongs. This power, this creativity, um, 
inspiration, influence. This is like divine dominance, but not, it's not dominance. I, that's why I was struggling at what to say, because I hear the word dominance, but it's not over creation. It's, it's like power reaffirmed for your own creativity. That's what it is. Literally um, assuming the rights to your creative power. Not assuming because it's already been assumed. Reclaiming the rights to your creative power. That's what that is here. It was already done as, in spirit. You know, it's all that that claim was already activated in the spiritual in the spiritual form, and now it's beginning to materialize. So that, you know, that that contract is um, that covenant is more so what it is is uh, complete. <laughs> Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment, and the Hermit. Yeah, so <clears throat> so what I'm sensing is it's twofold. It's those that have earned the right to be satisfied with themselves, secure, <clears throat> proud of what they have accomplished and attained. And those that ha have, you know, have projected this facade, there's, there's, here's the examiner, the investigator here that gets to make that determination overall as to who's worthy to sit in this, in, you know, in this energy of satisfaction and who's not and really it's not even an external force like i said it's like for those that know that their time is up they can keep up this facade all they want but internally as the hermit projects like i said earlier you can't hide from how you really feel it's only a matter of time before it starts to pour out into your existence you can't hide who you truly are so this is literally like the final curtain call for all um, characters of creation. What bow are you taking? Because the spotlight is most certainly on you from the divine, if nothing else. You know, this is like ancestral realms, astral, you know, way showers, guides ascended masters that are looking in like mm, as they're choosing their initiates to co-create with or inhabit in some way shape or form they're examining the heart space that's what it is and and that oh that wow that's all that was so that's why people have been cloaking themselves in this frequency and in this benevolence and in this spiritual affluence, you know, putting on the airs of all of which they can possibly do from aesthetically more than anything. But what they were fooling the masses, but they were never fooling the spirit. So this is really like that, This, like I was saying, like that performance review and the end of my message this is that where the performance of your of of your um, heart space is what is being examined. You have somebody that you know work themselves to the bone to prove their success and their affluence in a material sense, but what did you do energetically and spiritually? That's what's being considered now. And everybody might more or less look the same on the outside, at least to us all, one to another. Which leads me back to this, where I was going to say, like, you may or may not ever see the full curtain, you know, the, the full big reveal of what 
you've been sensing, but it doesn't even matter if you do. Your your um, revelation will be the um, upgrades and enhancements that you receive in your life if you're in the upright of this energy. Like you'll see the evidence of the pleasure of the divine with your performance. And those that have not been so exemplary will see the evidence, probably already are, as I've said, seeing the evidence of that review playing out in their lives as we speak. And they can hold on to that curtain for their life to hide what's behind the stage, but it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because the matter of the matters of the heart is for each man himself to bear. So who cares about the rest? Okay. Ooh, that was a little bit exhausting. <laughs> All right, well, I'm done with this. It's, it's going to be a lot of thing, a lot of shocking revelations, I think. Or I'll say, I don't, I don't really have the evidence for shocking, but I keep saying it. I think it's just going to be intriguing. Like, hmm. Like, really? We may not actually get to the shocking until next month. Leo season love who loves to be on the main stage drawing all the attention being the bi biggest skept uh, spectacle <laughs> that's when it might be a showstopper but right now it's like maybe you're drawing us in home you know our internal spaces to kind of watch something play out on TV but we're really more or less I'd say maybe at the beginning, probably more so middle of the season. We ain't even got to the finale yet. It's 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 the build up. But you kind of know where it's going, you know, like you can kind of see how the plot is is thickening. But you perhaps may have no idea how that final uh, episode is going to play out because, you know, shows love to leave you on a cliffhanger, even when it's the so-called end of a series. In this case, of which it very might, it just might very well be. So I guess we shall see. But in any event, remember, this is a full moon. So don't forget to rest as you feel guided, as you need to. Cleanse your, your energy physically, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, emotionally. Uh, you know, try to stay around folks that feed your soul, that don't deplete it. Um, if you're going to have conversations about what you're feeling or what's bugging you, Try to have it um, gracefully. And if it doesn't seem like that can happen, then you have all rights and authority to, to dismiss yourself from that exchange for your own energetic protection. Um, but otherwise, you know, as I said earlier, be mindful that everybody's experiencing this lunation and these transits all for one, one for all. And we all have an effect on each other in some way, shape, or form, even when we're not trying to. All right. Um, but take care of yourself and, <laughs> and each other, in the words of uh, Jerry Springer. Oh, God. <laughs> I rebuke that energy. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.